Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here bringing you a brand new Let's Play. This time through, we are going to be playing the Regrowth mod pack on the Feed the Beast launcher, pack code Regrowth. Version 0.6.5 Alpha is where we are starting, though the Alpha is perhaps not 100% justified, as it's not like we're seeing massive changes to the list of mods or the progression and recipes of the pack. It seems like it's in a fairly stable place in the dev cycle at this time and is just experimenting with bug fixes and taking its time before it tries to call itself done, which is a very refreshing change given my recent experiences. So let's take a look at the resource packs. I am using Vatix Faithful 32-bit pack and you will find a link to that in the down below as well. All of the informational links that you will need will be Hello in the description, please go take a look at that. I know most people skip right over it, but there are some very important bits of information there. I am going to be... Why are you there? You don't deserve to exist anymore. We are going to create a brand new world. Purple... Mentats... Let's play... Let, let play... Cannot... Words... Today! And we're going to use the seed Duncan Idaho. Yes, I've pre-scouted this slightly, but not a ton, creating the new world. Now, when you spawn into a world in Regrowth, you're going to be in a blasted wasteland full of dead trees, cracked sand, and slate boulders. Not a whole lot going on for you. Your job as this person is to fill the world again with life and greenery. Look at that. We got some lava over there. Awesome. You will see that there are dead there's dead grass around. You can punch it to get some resources, but not much. It's definitely going to be something you need to do. Now, first things first, this very first time we'll be opening to land and allowing cheats so that I can HQM quest. This is not a hardcore pack. Come on. Should kick at any moment now. Just takes a moment for everything to initialize. All right, here we go. Let's open up the quest book. Ah, I don't know why that's not playing. All right, no problem. You've awoken from slumber once more, but this time things seem a little different. The world itself appears dead around you, a wasteland stretching off into the distance, dotted by the skeletons of trees accompanied only by gray boulders. Even more curiously, the world itself seems barren. Try as you might, you cannot find a single deposit of minerals underground, leaving you to wonder what to make of this world. As you look around, you wonder what it will take to survive here, and how you might help the world recover. Fun times. Let's get going. What the world came to be, your first job since waking up should be to try and re-establish natural life in the world, and step one of that is let's try punching things. This desolate world seems littered with these dead trees and these gray boulders of slate, you think you may be able to salvage some materials from them with your bare hands. On closer inspection, the small stumpy dead trees seem to have been burnt to charcoal. No problem, so we need to go punch some trees and some boulders and get ourselves some dead wood, charcoal, and flint. While we're at it, we're also going to be harvesting any dead plants that we see along the way because they're going to be useful for the next quest. Now. It doesn't actually look like I have a ton of dead trees near my starting area. You'll note that I'm getting some strange resources from punching the plants. Hmm. Oh, look at that. There's some water off in the distance. That's definitely something I'm going to want as a resource. This is not a bad place to set up camp, honestly. I'll just need to get those basic resources going and then, you know, find my way back here without a minimap. No waypoints in this game. At least, not yet. That's something you'll have to unlock by working a little harder at it and progressing. So I'm going to wander around and I'm going to punch a bunch of things. I'm going to get the starting resources that I need. The very first step is rather grindy. And I'm going to keep my eyes open for a special resource that I'm hoping I'll find, which is going to make the early game a lot easier on me. Hmm. So yes, I won't uh, subject you to me wandering around punching things endlessly. Be back once I find what I need. All right, on my travels, I actually found a really nice resource. This is a witchery stone circle, and down here, there's a dispenser. It doesn't have the most useful things in the world, but hey, 
It's a heck of a lot easier than I was going to have a minecart any other way. And I think uh, there are... Yes, there are witch spawners in here. So it's definitely not something I want to be close to at night. Uh, let's avoid... Um, here, there. Now we can get out. And as you can see, I managed to wander far enough to find the dead trees. Which... Mm, that's good. Makes life a little easier to actually have the things that I need. I did not find the special resource I was looking for, which is a wicker man, also from witchery. That is a very useful early game resource because it gives you a ton of free food. And that is a dying... That, that is a very odd place for you to be, Mr. Squid. How did you get there? What are you doing down there? Okay, so now it's just a matter of punching trees to get the charcoal and sticks and dead wood that I need to get going. Unfortunately, punching trees is a slow and slightly painful business. It is not that you, you don't get resources quickly by punching trees. However, in oh sure, now you notice I opened my inventory for the first time. <laughs> I don't know what mod does that, but it's kind of fun getting a giant fireworks display every time I open up, uh, every time I earn an achievement. And I am sorry for the bloop bloop that just happened. Someone messaged me on Steam. This is why I don't accept a lot of Steam friend requests. I'm always forgetting to turn off the sound when I am recording. Doop -a doo We should be getting close. I think I needed four charcoal. And I'm going to need to punch some slate to get some flint as well. Luckily, you get a lot of flint out of the slate. Almost, almost, almost. Yes, I need two more charcoal. Ah, <sighs> two more charcoal. Come on. This is probably the most boring and grindy portion of this entire pack in my experience so far. It is a lot of fun, but you need to get past this initial you have nothing grind. Totally worth it in the long run, in my not so humble opinion. Okay. Where's that last bit of charcoal? I keep thinking there's no point to cutting through the recording and going and doing it because at the next log I punch is going to have the charcoal and then it doesn't. It does look like only some of the logs are blasted and burnt. So maybe if I go looking specifically, see, there's a small texture difference between this one and this one. Oh, that's also a charred log, not a dead log. You will find charcoal in the charred log. Well, I guess that makes a certain amount of sense. So that gets us 12 apples and, you know, some initial food to not starve. I prefer not starving as a general rule. Now we unlock grass ping at straws. I love it. On closer inspection, some small amounts of grass, though dead, still remain in this wasteland. Maybe you'll be able to find some seeds or other useful materials amongst the dead dry strands. We already have the three floral fertilizer, three clay, one bone meal, and one pasture seed. We just need to punch some more and find some belladonna seeds. However, before we go th that far, we can start making some tools. Let's get started making some flint tools. We're going to want two axe heads made with three flint like that. We're going to want a couple of shovel heads made with two flint each, like so. And we're going to need a pickaxe head, which I believe is just the two. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Now, we're going to want to turn our sticks into wooden tool rods, like so. We're going to produce one mattock, one axe or hatchet, one flint shovel, and one flint pickaxe. Oh, I need the wooden binding. To make the wooden binding, well, it's just a couple of sticks in a pattern like a... Oh, what do you call it? The, the, the thing that shears the sheep. Shears. Yeah. I swear, sometimes I don't know why you people listen to me. Ooh, and it's getting dark. I made that pickaxe just in time. We are going to use said pickaxe to... Uh, I think what we're going to do, actually. We're going to use our mattock to get just a little bit more goodies. And Oh, was that? That was a seed. Wow, that's unexpected. We are going to burrow into the ground over here. Yes. And this will be our haven of safety to weather the dark. 
for this first night. We're definitely going to want to work it on getting a bed as fast as possible so we don't have to do this. But with as much charcoal as we have, we can easily make a handful of torches so that it can be nice and cozy bright in here. Now, if I take a look at my quest book, I can see that with this quest complete, which I can get my flint sword blade and I'll take a bone crossbar. How about? This unlocks the Earthly Possessions quest, so I can dig up 32 dirt and 32 cobblestone. With a bit of dirt, you can grow stuff, and with a bit of stone, you can build stuff. What more do you want? Maybe these can be found in a subterranean environment. That's right, we're going to be digging down, not because we're going to find any minerals, but because we get dirt and stone from below the earth, as you can see. Fantastic. So, I'm going to spend some time and weather the night by digging around and getting myself some dirt and some cobblestone. And I'm going to keep track of the time with my favorite little NEI cheat, look up a clock, and pay attention. Once this gets back towards morning and I've got the quest complete, I shall return. But I am going to make myself a weapon. Not because I think it's particularly all that great, but it does the job well enough. Attack damage 1.5 plus 3 attack. That is significantly worse than my flint mattock. That is a shame. Come on, Tinkers, why you do this to me? That's all right. Uh, huh, I thought the crossbar gave you the longsword. That was my mistake. That's what I get for not reading the books, right? In any case, see you soon. Alrighty, it's morning once again, and thanks to the spider outside and the magic of Batania, I actually acquired a little bit of string, because they shed string just by existing every now and then. You can make yourself a little spider pen and collect a rather a lot of string just by letting them run around on top of some hoppers and they'll eventually drop it and you'll be good. So I managed to collect uh, over a stack of both dirt and cobblestone. In fact, probably more stuff than I really should have. Finishing up the earthly possessions quest. Next on the list would be patterned response, but I want to get a good solid stable home point before I set up all of these blocks. So I'm going to run around and I'm going to find those belladonna seeds. I just wanted to check back in at the end of the night, let you know how things were. And then I think I'm going to head back to that initial spot. Well, see, now I have a conundrum. I really liked that. It, ooh, there's the belladonna seeds I needed. I really like that initial spot being next to the ocean and not having a giant cliff leading into the sea and having all of that lava nearby but it doesn't have any of the trees and such around that I really in do kind of need in the long run. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this bundle of sticks there, and I'm going to spend, uh, and we're actually going to get rid of this bit of andesite, because as much as I like chisel, it's not going to be useful for a very long time. I think I'm going to spend some time, I'm going to chop down a bunch more trees on my way home, and yes, that's going to end up leaving some tree balls in the air, but that's okay. Because I don't want to have to go roaming later on to get this stuff. And I need a good bit of charcoal to get started anyway. So, once I have made it back to near that initial spawn, near that lava pool, because I get the feeling I'm going to want easy access to some lava later on, then I will return... I'm going to collect a bunch of gravel and such on the way. I'm going to dig up a bunch of plants in the ground and basically just spend some extra grindy time at the beginning to hopefully make everything move smoothly through the end of, well, through a more self-sufficient time. I feel like if I entirely skip over this uh, hunter-gatherer phase where I have to be out gathering things by hand, then I'm going to be cheating myself partially on the experience, but more importantly on the long-term benefits of having put the time in. All right, folks, so I will see you back when I am back at a spot where I want to build a more permanent base. So this was probably inevitable, but I got lost. However, I did find an area with both ah, water and lava and unfortunately monsters. Um, no. Ha ha ha. Ah, winning. All right. So now that he's uh, disposed of for the moment, let's hide in the ground in the dirt. And I just wanted to show you that I had found a place that we were going to be calling home and I wanted to... Yeah. Um, 
it's it, it's not brilliant, all right? It, it, but we're, <laughs> we're surviving-ish. Oh no, I used my hatchet at some point. That's all right. So if you want to make your crafting table, the quest book will in fact tell you that you need to use a fully repaired hatchet with one dead wood to get a crafting table. And I'm going to need a couple of them, actually. I know that for a fact. So let's start making a little bit of room down here for an initial base. I plan to build on the surface eventually, once it is a little bit safer to do. But for now, I just need to handle my inventory woes. And woe are they a problem. Let's get stuff deposited. Just so much random stuff that is not necessarily useful to anyone for any reason. Now we can finally hand in grasp ping at straws to get our six seeds, carrot seeds, and potato seeds. And we can hand in our earthly possessions to get 32 dirt, 32 stone, and my choice of marble or limestone. I'm going to take marble because I like the look of the stuff. Now it does want us to build a full set of tinkers tools. Well, tinkers items and I will get a full guard pattern out of it, which I'm quite happy about. So I'm going to work on that for a moment. We are going to need our sticks and our dead wood to create some patterns. This will probably be more than I ever need, so that I'm counting that as a success. Make our stencil table the usual way, except using one of the dead wood instead of a plank. Our tool station the usual way. The only tricky one is the Heart builder, where we need to create a dead log out of nine dead wood and then use a blank pattern on top of that to get the part builder. Uh, oh, it's been giving me books as I go and that's not happy about that. That's okay. Now we can make the part builder. Yay! All right. And I also need to make myself a pattern chest as well as a furnace. And the reason I'm not using the crafting station, by the way, is because you can't shift click into a crafting station that's next to a chest like this. It's not great. So now that I have a bit of extra stuff, we can set it up. We're only going to be living underground long enough for me to get things secure, but I might as well get things. Uh, not the tool station. The tool station goes next to it. The stencil table goes on top. Might as well get things arranged and cozy down here for a bit. Very cozy. Too much so. That's okay. Uh, into the stencil table goes our blank patterns. And I believe it's going to want me to make some patterns now, isn't it? Nope, that was all I needed to do. Pattern response complete. Another stack of dead wood, 16 charcoal, and a full guard pattern are now mine. We're going to put that full guard pattern over here. Unfortunately, we need stone, obsidian, netherrack, or thomium to make use of the full guard pattern. We're not going to be able to make ourselves a decent cutlass for a while, but that's all right. As long as we're working with flint anyway, this Maddock is probably going to be doing better damage than we can get almost anywhere else. So not a big worry. Next on my list is going to be buckets of stuff and buckets of stuff. You found plenty of water pulled around the world. While it might be kind of murky, it does the job and will be useful for farming, but you need a way to move it around. Maybe you'll be able to form a crude bucket from some of the clay you've pulled up with the dead grass. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use three of the seven clay that we have to create an unfired clay bucket from Iguana Tinker Tweaks. And then we will need to fire this in a furnace. So toss this in here with a couple of sticks because I'm not cooking a whole lot of stuff just yet. Also on the list is flowering. It wants me to use the floral fertilizer to produce some interesting flowers when used on a dirt surface. I'll be working on that once daytime is here, but we're at midnight at the moment. So with the bucket quest complete, we get 24 bone meal and 64 dirt, which is amazing. That'll speed us along quite a bit. And we have unlocked access to not Farmville 3. We need to get uh, growing things. Crops are the way to do so. Crops are created in a any crafting grid, very simply, with just a bunch of sticks. It takes four sticks to make four crops, and I'm going to make a pile of them because I'm going to need them. These are from the AgriCraft mod, and this is one of the keystones of the entire pack. We're going to be making use of the AgriCraft mod throughout our entire playthrough. It's going to be fun. Detection task. After we have created the crops to give the uh, some growth support, 
we are going to need to do some growing and crossbreed some of our plants together. However, that's going to have to wait until morning. So join me in just a little bit and we will be at morning and we can go out there, start doing some building. I think I'll do my best to collect some materials so I can build myself a little wall around a little compound for me. See you soon, folks. All right. The best part about settling here. Oh, there's a creeper over there. I'm going to go take care of him. What the heck are you? That is a tiny enderman. Anyway, we're going to deal with this creeper before we worry about anything else. That was a bit hairy. Okay. So, I'm down a little bit of HP because there was a spider wandering around on top of my base. More random grass. It's fun finding these pockets of life in this barren wilderness. In any case, Wicker Man from... Oh, uh, what is it called? Witchery? Yeah. Always going to be a spawner underneath. You probably want to break that early on, but... This is a fantastic resource in the early game because this basically solves food for you for so long that it, it's just not a worry. So it, it's worth it, in my opinion, to wander until you can find one of these. Of course, that's just like my opinion and stuff. All right, so we're going to take that and we're going to make some food out of it. Hay bales are nine wheat in a bundle. So, I take that wheat and I turn it all into bread, I should end up with about 60 bread. Yep. That's why I was so happy to find that. Fantastic. Now, let's set up a bit of a farm. Hmm. Got my bucket here. And I'm gonna need some dirt. I left it all under here. Let's grab some dirt. So, I think what we're gonna do... is gonna break down this, sh this slate. And I think I want to flatten things and build everything on the same level to start. We'll get into some serious landscaping and beautification projects later. But for now, we're just going to make ourselves an infinite water source up here at Y64. Bump. 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 There we are. And I'm going to spend just a little bit of time flattening out a bunch of the cracked sand with this starter pickaxe that I have. It's not going to go super fast, but that's okay. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time building a wall around this area, probably starting two away from this little pool like that. And I'll just build it out of cracked sand. It'll just be a couple high at the moment. That's what I'm going to be doing in between episodes. Right now, let's build our first little starter farm. Right around this pool of water. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Missed a spot. Not a giant surprise. How about we put the right thing in there? Now, we're going to need to use our mattock, right-click on the dirt to till it into farmland, and you will quickly see that the farmland will become hydrated by being near the water. That's why we wanted the water up here, and we'll be able to expand it from there. A dirt block needs to be within one, two, three, four spaces of a water block to count and be hydrated. We can plant these crops on any of these blocks. Actually, I'm going to dig you up. I'm still missing a very important resource that I'm hoping to find a deposit of underground, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's get some crops down. First things first, we're going to put down some seeds and some carrots and some potatoes. And, um, hang on. Let me check the crossbreeds that we need. Specifically, in the quest book, we need sugarcane and mandrake. To produce mandrake, it is potato plus belladonna. So, we're going to grow belladonna seeds here and potato seeds here. And then, we need to put a, another crop on this spot to make a cross crop. We can also put one here to increase the speed at which we get mutations. We do need to wait for these to hit 100%, but if you want to, you can speed that along with some of your initial bone meal. Just don't use it all. There we go. Now, in this other corner here, 
And actually, not here. We're not going to do it here. We're going to do it over here. Uh, yes. Here and here. We're going to need another resource that we don't have at the moment. We need some red sand, or any other form of sand, actually. So, we're going to put down some carrot seeds there, and some regular seeds there. Oop, you can see, we have got belladonna seeds here. That's not what we're after. We're going to break that crop, put down a new one. It consumes the cross crop every time it generates a new seed. So, be aware of that. Now, since we don't have the sand we need, we're going to have to make it, which we can do very easily by using a clay bucket and that cracked sand to rehydrate it into regular sand. Fantastic. You can find red sand around the world, especially along beaches or buried underground, but this will speed things up because now we can put down our cross crops between the seeds and the carrots, and that should give us what we need to create sugarcane according to the quest book. You can check any of the crosses yourself through the recipe finder. For example, if I look up sugarcane seeds, hit R on that through NEI, it tells me that seeds plus carrot seeds equals sugarcane seeds. Awesome. However, sugarcane can only grow on grass, so you have to make sure you have the proper soil underneath whatever you're trying to grow. And as before, we can speed this up by using a few bone meal to get this to fully grown. Now there's a number of other mechanics involved in AgriCraft. We will definitely be covering them as the series progresses. For right now though, I believe the next step is going to be building a fairly large pad of dirt so that I can start using up this floral fertilizer. I only have the seven at the moment, but I'll be able to make up quite a bit more than that as needed. So I'm gonna do a bit of mild landscaping and get myself a safe place, well, safe-ish place, with a wall of cracked sand between me and the hostile outside world. Uh, let's, let, let, let's do it to... Hang on. One, two, three, four. Mm, sure. Let's go to here, because that'll be easier. And the important part outside of the area is going to be making sure I cut a good two or three wide swath here so that nothing can easily jump over. And eventually I probably want to level out a lot of this mound, actually. But that's going to be easier once I have some better tools. I just want to make sure that nothing can easily jump over the wall and, thing, and things like skeletons can't easily see in to shoot me. But I can do that just by building a tall wall. So yeah, I'm going to do some landscaping. I'm going to get myself a pad of dirt built. And once we're ready for something a little more advanced, and once those mutations have finished, is there... Ooh, look, we have a new one. There we go. There's our mandrake seeds. Awesome. I think I'm going to let those grow naturally, though, because I don't want to be wasting all my bone meal. So I'll be back in a little while. This is a very grindy first episode, so there is a lot of cuts. However, in the future, we will move away from some of the grindiness and be able to bang out a lot of quests fairly quickly, as well as get a really cool base set up. This takes i just i really like the way this pack works and i think you guys are going to be excited to see some of what is ahead for us see you soon all right folks as you can see it is the middle of the night and i have made my new home slightly safer to exist in i've got a little uh three high cracked sand fortification everything's lit up inside of here i have my tiny little farm all built life is good and I have the lava pool for the most part covered over and yet still accessible in case I want to, I don't know, discard of things in there. I don't want to do so yet though. Resources are very limited. So we have some full grown sugar cane here. I'm going to grab that by right clicking. If you were to left click on the mature crops, you're not going to get any extra seeds. You're going to get the crops back one seed of the appropriate type. Hmm, it says unidentified. We'll get to that next time. And you'll get the plant in question, or the re results of growing said. So let's harvest some of this mandrake here. Now mandrake, huh, we got lucky. Frequently when you harvest mandrake, you end up with a little running guy, an actual living mandrake running around that you have to take out. And they're kind of nasty because they cause nausea and it's just, it's unpleasant. And anyway, any case, that is, 20 more bone meal to me. 
and we unlock feeling seedy and mutation. Now, let's tackle flowering real quick. I want to show you at least how that's going to work. Is this the only eight floral fertilizer I have? That might be an issue. It is. Oh boy. Well, luckily we have 39 bone meal. So we've got a nice big wide pad of dirt here, which is part of what I wanted. Every time you right click dirt with floral fertilizer, you will get between two and four flowers generated. So majestic. Now, they will generate basically no matter what. So there's nothing stopping you from right clicking a few times and creating all of the flowers. Just make sure you actually have between two and four spots nearby to generate the flowers in. Let's put up a... Oh, I'm missing... I don't have any wood on hand. So let's just grab 16 dead wood so I can put a double chest up here. And it's going to end up being my Batania chest. Because we're going to be doing an awful lot with Batania during this playthrough. It is basically required. So, actually, that went very well with the floral fertilizer. We only need two of these mystic white flowers, and I already have one. There's two, and there's a third. Excellent. That's going to get us 16 more floral fertilizer, as well as 16 bone meal. And will... And unlocks access to the growing knowledge quest. However, we're going to have to tackle any further questing next time. Thank you very much for joining me, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. Tell me what you liked. And if you have not, leave a thumbs down. Tell me what you didn't like. Between this time and next, I'm going to do some extra work inside of my little compound. Get these... Get the whole area organized into farms a bit better if I can. And maybe figure out something to do about that lava pool. Or maybe just expand out that direction some. I'm not certain yet. Next time, I'm going to be on a quest for two things. One, we're going to be following the quest chain and completing some more of our objectives. Two, I want a bed, which means I need some cotton. You'll have to see how we get that tomorrow. See you next time.